Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a quick look at nesting works and how it it functions within uh, the SolidWorks CAM professional add-in. Uh, this is uh, going to take into account you know SolidWorks 2018 going forward uh, because SolidWorks CAM started in 2018. So we'll have this simple assembly here. As you can see in this assembly, there's multiple parts. Um, everything is tab and slotted. This is very similar to how I used to use it uh, when I was running. Uh, the equivalent of SolidWorks CAM Professional uh, and nesting works for a laser. So the first thing we'll take a look at is the nesting works add-in. Uh, we'll go ahead and open it up and you have the ability to create a nesting job. So you can look at all these different parts as you can see here. You can check which parts you want, which ones you don't want. So if you had you know other components in here you could ignore those. Let's say you had fasteners or um, angle iron for example. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add all of these parts to our component. And then from here, we're going to go ahead, open it up. It does a quick check. There is a uh, part in here that does have a blank body. Uh, this was added by design just to show you that it does look at the geometry inside the part. It does not need to be native sheet metal. Um, you could use this for woodworking as well. Because what we do is we actually are going to classify each individual component based upon material type and thickness. Once it goes through and calculates all the individual components, as I click on them here, you can see it highlights on the screen, shows a direction, I see a 2D profile preview. Uh, I have the ability to specify grain direction, customize any of the material properties if I want to, if I want to change them. It tells me the part size, the thickness, and then the angles that I want to rotate. Some of these components are longer, so may I, I may only want them to rotate 90 degree increments. You can define that per part. Uh, what's cool about this too is I have the ability as I go through here, I can change um, the grain direction I'm using. But if I go to the top, you can see that we're going to cut one of these assemblies. Well, let's say I needed four of them for one example. If I type in four at the assembly level, it automatically creates the correct number of components that are needed to make four assemblies. So for our example, we'll just go back to one. But that's one of the nice things about it is I don't have to calculate how many of each piece I need. I can just say how many assemblies I want and it auto takes those uh, auto adds those components for me. The next step is to go to the sheet data. So here you can see I have 20 sheets of 134. If I had multiple thicknesses or multiple material types, I would continue to add the sheets that I need to make this happen. Now I can pick different types of sheets here. I can also use a custom sheet. DXF or SolidWorks Sketch. So if I had remnants or a specific shape, I could go through and say, hey, I want to use you know a specific component or a specific sketch from a part. We'll just leave this as standard. If I'm running like a multi-head router, then I can define the, the components necessary for multi-head. And the next part we go to is the actual options. You have a part to part and a sheet to part distance. So if you if you have clamps, let's say, uh, and you're holding the sheet down or you're using a laser, for example, where the table moves and the head is stationary, you could set a part to sheet distance. So that would be the edge of the sheet in where the parts would start. Um, these can be adjusted and then you would have a between part distance. Um, one of the things with solid work or with nesting works at the moment is uh, it does not allow common line cutting, so it's each individual component. With that said, in SolidWorks CAM, we can draw sketches and lines and cut those if you wanted to do common line. In our example here, let's say a quarter inch is good enough. If I'm using a wood router, I may want to make it, you know, if I'm using a half inch end mill, maybe I want to keep it six, five eighths away from the edge of the or between parts, so that way I have room to actually cut in there. Um, the next step here is we can output this as a DXF. So if you have another CAM system for like your laser, for example, let's say you're using uh, the Amata programming software where you just want to bring in a DXF and put their toolpaths on it, I can simply just nest the assembly and, and export it as a DXF. I do have the ability to generate remnants here, so I can have it create a sketch of the remnants that I could then store and use over. And then the last part we have is the nesting type. By default, it goes to fast nesting, which is just a, a very simple algorithm for placing the components. If I wanted it to go through more iterations of the nesting process, I can turn on optimal 
and then give it a time limit where I want it to uh, end at. So we'll go ahead and we'll do preview nest. And as you can see here, I now have a preview of the nest. And as I click around on these parts, you can see that they highlight the 2D shape in bold. So I know which ones I'm looking at. It also tells me the quantity. And then if I had multiple sheets, I could go between the multiple sheets. Um, I can show a summary here as well. And the summary would then pop up and tell me all the components, the utilization of the sheet. So I have a, an automatic printout of, of what it's going to look like. So I could come back in and, and make a change if necessary. Now in this example here, we'll go ahead and um, do generate nested assembly. Again, if I want to do a DXF, I could save these as a DXF. I can also set different line colors. Um, so there's like uh, SDS, for example, um, it, it sees different line colors as things to cut, things to ignore. You can set all of those up and then it puts it on different layers. Um, for our example, we'll just do generate nested assembly. Once the assembly is generated, you can see we now have our sheet sketch and then we have all the parts nested out. If I hit OK here, it'll actually show me the results again. Um, and this allows me to check to see if there's any parts that got missed. I can see the utilization, the quantity, all that good stuff. I used to use this as a final check just to make sure that there isn't a part that got dropped by accident because um, the geometry isn't correct or an imported part. You know, sometimes you, you have to assist a little bit with the unfold. But from here, I now have an assembly and everything is laid out in that nested order. You can see it's auto fixed. And at this point, I now have a nest. So from here, I can now work on the CAM programming side of things. That's where SolidWorks CAM Professional comes in. So with SolidWorks CAM Professional, I'm now gonna go to my part manager, and say I wanna, mach I wanna cut all those parts. And you can see it puts those together. If I go to my stock manager, I can tell it that I wanna use an extruded sketch. So if I scroll down here, you can see that they're all set to bounding box. So they each have their individual bounding box. If I set these as one, so I can say I want those all to be one, one piece of stock, I can go to here, set my sketch. Remember our material thickness is 134, hit okay. And I now have that set up. Now, if I had different material thicknesses and different material types, what nesting will automatically do is create a unique SolidWorks assembly configuration for all those thicknesses. So if I were to come over here, you can see I have a quantity of one for this assembly. If I had, you know, half inch, quarter, three eighths, you know, or wood mixed in here, I would see a configuration of each one and each configuration would auto load with the correct sketch. In SolidWorks CAM Professional, I would then create a unique configuration for each individual one. So I just have one assembly with all my programs, everything is linked together. The next step is we'll define our coordinate system. So we'll zoom in here and we'll say this is where zero is going to come from on our sheet. And then at this point, we're, we're sort of in the, in the realm of what you would see in SolidWorks CAM standard. I have multiple ways I could machine these parts or grab these profiles. I can go through and in SolidWorks CAM, I can insert two and a half axis uh, features. I can go pick all the inside profiles. Um, I, I can do that and there are some automatic settings where I can auto pick the inside loops but I can use feature recognition. So if I come over here to feature recognition, I can say, I want you to find holes, non-holes, and then I want you to find the perimeter because everything we cut is gonna be like a pocket. And I can say any hole that's bigger than 10 thousandths, I want you to treat it as a pocket. So by using holes, non-holes, and perimeter, I can auto find all those profiles and shapes. So if I go ahead and hit okay here, the next thing we'll look at is strategies. Now in 2019, you can create machine specific strategies. So I could, when I pick my CNC machine, I could pick one called laser and it would automatically set some custom rules that I have, I have developed here already, which is laser tab, internal circle and perimeter. Now you can create these in multiple ways. There, there is no one right or, right or wrong way. Um, when I set it up, I would program a part and then I would teach it how I wanted the lead in and lead out to be based on material type and thickness. And then over the course of time, it became to where you could pick a couple buttons and it would automatically program the part for you. In our example here, we'll just do extract machinable features.
And once it's done finding the features, you'll go ahead and you can see that everything has been assigned. By using my default strategies, you see I have a bunch of laser tab ones. Um, there are a few in here that are rough finish. I could go through and I could change those parameters. So I could say instead of rough finish, I want to use laser slot. And then from there, it would use laser slot. So you can customize the strategies based on what you want to see. Um, you can also go through and, and redefine and make a change to that. So if rectangular slot, you could go to default strategies and I could say in rectangular slots or slots, I want you to find, change that to laser slot, hit apply, and it'll auto adjust all of those to my laser slot strategy. So now you can see I have laser slot. If I go to a regular slot, I could change that one as well, hit apply. So even if it finds those, you don't have to go back and redo any work. You can just say, this is what I want you to use for this setting. And now I have all the laser slots defined. From here, we're now gonna generate operation plan, which should tell it to go grab the correct tool and the correct strategy. Now, if we're talking laser water jet plasma, it's gonna be one pass around with a lead in and lead out. If we're doing woodworking, you may wanna do more of the traditional milling. That's why you have the ability to make all of these adjustments and set everything the way that you want them to be. Once it's done generating the operation plan, you can see that we are, you know, we roughly have 174 features that we found in this nest. Um, right now they're set to quarter inch end mills. I can come in and say, hey, any, anything that um, is a quarter inch, I now want it to use a, a custom tool or a special tool. I could set this by default as well too, to where if I'm doing laser water jet or plasma, I have a tech uh, tool crib that has just the diameter of the beam in it. And then I use that by default. Um, in my example here, I'm using a stock data database. So it went and grabbed a quarter inch end mill because that's my uh, smallest default that I have in there. But I'll show you here in just a second once it generates how easy it is to move these to another tool. So in our tool tree here, you can see that everything falls under a quarter inch. What I wanna do is I'm gonna add a tool from my library. And we'll go to flat end. Down here, I have different diameters of laser beams for different types of machines. So now I have this O5000 flat end. We will take all of these and we'll drag them to our 5000th flat end. And just like that, all of our tools are now using this 5000th flat end. So as I look down the tree, you can see I now have 5000 end mill. The last step in here is if we come and look at any of these profiles, we can see the tool paths. We can adjust our lead in and lead out depending upon what we want. If you wanted this part to be tabbed, for example, it's as simple as changing the setting. We'll do a negative lead in overlap. We'll make that 90 degree lead in and lead out. I hit OK. Do negative. And now you can see I have a tab on this side. All the rules for SOLIDWORKS can apply to this. I can do avoids, contains. I can have a library of special notches. I can drag and drop into the part and then auto avoid those to create different lead in and lead out. I could change the start point from middle to the corner. All of those things are available. But at this point, I now have my part programmed with all the internal external slots. I could go through and I could look at a simulated tool path. Um, depending, just depending upon how you want to see it. So you can see here, I can look at it. If I change this to shaded with edges, you can now see where my profiles are being cut. And I can change to cut internal, external on these. It's really just an order of how these features are created. Um, if I drag and drop and change the order, now when it posts out the program, it's going to be in that way. So it, you can use automatic feature recognition for this to speed up the process. You can always also go in and individually pick features or groups of features. So if we look at this part here, you can see this is the part I'm going to machine. If I wanted to do a traditional 2.5 axis feature, I can say I want a pocket and I want all the inner loops. And when I pick that face, it automatically grabbed those tabs for me. So if we're looking at a part with hundreds of internal loops, I can say, hey, 
just go find everything on the inside, treat it as a pocket. We'll do up to stock. Laser tab is our strategy. And just like that, we have those, those pockets selected. So you can very easily and quickly uh, interactively do it too. It depends upon the types of components that you're using, but there are multiple ways to program the components. The last step in here would obviously be to post out the, the G code. If the correct post processor is selected for the machine, you just have the post. So we'll select one. And then at this point I can post it and everything becomes G code. So that's a real quick overview of how nesting works, how SolidWorks CAM Professional works with the nesting component. Again, if this was wood or we're using a router, the, the tool paths would be a little bit different based on the what we need to machine. But the process from nesting through um, programming is actually pretty simple because it all stays inside of the SolidWorks interface. Uh, if you're using individual parts, then that means any if any of the parts change or get updated, the uh, Nest will automatically update as well. So if I were to take this and open this up, it would be the original part that was drawn inside of SolidWorks. So we're maintaining that associativity. So with that, uh, hopefully this gives you a little better understanding of how some of the SolidWorks add-ins run with SolidWorks and with SolidWorks CAM standard or professional. Thank you. Mm -hmm.